right, let's get this show on the road. Let's start building this project. What we're going to do in this video is a lot of the initial setup. Uh, for example, we're going to get our project up and running uh, and just show a view controller with, you know, deleting the storyboard. There's some setup to do there, especially new in iOS 13. There's the scene delegate. We're going to talk about that at a high level. I'm going to explain why. Apple decided to split up the app delegate from the scene delegate. And then to finish off the video, we're going to import some assets in the app icon. Uh, and the assets will have the light and dark mode. So we'll start talking about dark mode. And then lastly, I'll show you how to download SF symbols because we are going to use those in later videos. Uh, so I just want to get that download out of the way as the initial setup. So first things first, let's create a new Xcode project. By the way, I'm assuming you know how to download Xcode. This is an intermediate uh, course. So go ahead and open up Xcode do a uh, new Xcode project. And I'm gonna make my windows uh, full screen and a single view application. Uh, you can name this whatever you'd like. I'm gonna name it GH followers. It's probably a logical name there. Your team should be you, mine Sean Allen, organization name. I mean, it can be whatever you want. If you have a team and organization, that's fine. Um, your organization identifier, usually uh, this is my website, seanallen.co. Language in Swift, and then user interface, this is a big one, uh, storyboard. Make sure it's not set to Swift UI. I believe it's Swift UI by default. So make sure you have storyboard. Even though we're deleting storyboard, uh, Swift UI will pull up, you know, Swift UI with the, the uh, preview pane and all that stuff. So stor uh, storyboard, hit next. Uh, save it to wherever you like. I have my chapter code. By the way, in this uh, course, you're going to get the sample code is going to be broken down like where we left off in the chapter. So if like, you know, you screwed up the app later on, you can go back to chapter eight, download my, my sample code and, and be good to go. Have a clean working copy right at that state. Um, so uh, save it wherever you like. That's where I'm saving mine. And here we are. We have our blank project. Before we dive into like deleting the storyboard, let's click off the landscape left and landscape right. Uh, we're not going to mess around with, you know, landscape in uh, on a take home project. They're not going to expect it to actually conform to landscape mode as well, most likely, uh, because that actually usually takes a lot of work depending on the UI of the app. And unless, you know, you never know, right? Maybe the company you're interviewing for their app is specifically in landscape. So might be a different story. But again, I think that's an edge case. So we're going to not mess around with landscape mode uh, as well. Neither same thing with the iPad. We're not going to do that uh, as well for this current course. So let's get rid of the storyboard. After all, we're doing this 100% programmatically. So the first thing right above, actually the first thing, let's make a ceremony of it, right? Let's delete the main storyboard here. So click on that, right click, delete. Yes, move that thing to the trash. Now we're back here, so that's gone. But uh, here are the main interface. As you see, I have like an arrow pointing to it. Um, it says it's gonna look for main. It's going to look for the main storyboard and we don't want that, right? We wanna kind of remove any reference to the main storyboard. And there's two. There's one other place besides here. So let's delete main. That way it's not looking for main storyboard. You'll, you'll get a crash if you don't delete that. And then the other place there's a reference to it is in the info P list. So here on the left, if you click on your P list, Click in the plist, do a command F to find and type in main. I've already done that. <laughs> Little spoilers, I was practicing this. <laughs> so you type in main up there, this will pull up. And uh, so you see, delete this here, this little minus button next to storyboard name, main, hit that minus button, that gets rid of that. And now we've removed all kind of like references to the main storyboard. So the project's never gonna look for a main storyboard. That's what we want. So now we're ready for some code. But before we do that, let's talk about what I kind of alluded to in the beginning, the like why Apple split up app delegate and scene delegate. Like iOS 13 introduced this brand new way of scene delegate. And if you've created a project before without storyboard, you've done everything in the app delegate, right? You see here, here's your example of app delegate. Um, you notice it's a lot shorter than it used to be, right? App delegate used to have things like, uh, you know, did enter background, will enter foreground, those type of life cycle stuff. That has all been moved to the scene delegate here. So if you see, if I click on scene delegate, you see, I see scene, uh, you know, scene will enter foreground, scene did enter background, that kind of stuff. And here's why. Basically, the introduction of a, the, the scene delegate allows for multi-window operations. If you look here on the screen, I have an iPad up, and you can see I have an example where I have two instances of the app GoodNotes that I did my sketches in for the design here. Uh, before, you could have two apps side by side, but they had to be different apps. Well, now you can have two of the same app, two instances. And the scene delegate is what kind of allows that because there's a little bit of a paradigm shift. Before, your app used to have a window and that window would be displayed. Now your app has scenes and you can have multiple scenes. So for example, when, when you see this, the two GoodNotes apps right next to each other, that's two scenes uh, of the GoodNotes. Uh, so the app still has one app delegate, but you can have multiple scenes. 
because for example, you know, if you have two scenes up, you know, this whole will enter foreground, did enter background, like, well, which scene was it? But now if each scene uh, has its own delegate, now I can bring one of these good notes scenes down and now that entered background, but the other one's still up, right? So you get how it's, it, it separates it, right? You're allowed to have multiple windows or, or scenes, I'm sorry, uh, of your app at once. And it seems like Apple's kind of going that way, as you see with the iPad. To be honest with you, I'm not sure this is going to come into play with Catalyst. If you can have multiple windows open of the same app in Catalyst, maybe. But uh, definitely uh, this new multi-window paradigm. This is why the scene delegate came into play. Uh, I think that's good foundational knowledge for you to know at a high level. Um, you know, you can dig and do more research on the scene delegate if you like. But I think if you understand this is what allows multi-scenes uh, of your app, you know, having the good notes side by side, I think you're good to go. So now let's start writing the code here. In the scene delegate, now we have our window, right? This window used to be in the app delegate, now it's in the scene delegate. Because the scene delegate is gonna be how we kind of uh, configure our UI for each scene. So we're gonna delete all these comments uh, just for cleanliness, get rid of that. Um, so right here, this guardlet uh, underscore. So just for knowledge, right? Anytime you're initializing a variable with an underscore, the variable exists, you're just not giving it a name. So we wanna give that a name because we're gonna use it. Like if it's just underscore, we can't use it. So we're gonna call it window scene so guard that window scene equals scene which is this scene here from the uh the this will connect to is very similar to the did finish launching with options in uh the app delegate it's kind of like the first thing that runs so now we need to configure our window with the window scene uh and all that stuff so uh this window here is what we're using on line 13 so window it's going to not the window scene window equals we're going to initialize a ui window here and then if you see that we're going to get a frame uh, so the frame we're going to initialize it with is the window scene what we just created on line 18 window scene dot coordinate space dot bounds and basically that makes it you know fill up the full screen and every window has a window scene so we want to set our windows window scene to this window scene here on line 18 i know there's a lot of you know similar words there but window not window scene window dot window scene equals window scene again that's what we we have up here and then now that uh you know we have our window configured with the scene we need to set our root view controller like this is the the view controller we want to show for right now we're just going to use this default view controller that that we, you get when you start a new project we're going to change that in a future video but again we just want to get up and running and showing a view controller right this is the initial setup but we do want to do window dot root view controller right so the window needs a view controller to show equals ui uh, view controller, not UI view controller, I'm sorry, just the view controller, which is again the name of this view controller here on the left. Uh, we're going to name that something different later, but this is what we're going to show for now. And then what makes everything all possible is to do window dot make key and visible. So that's what actually shows it. Now to make sure we're showing this view controller right here, let's go into that view controller and just give it a, a funky background color just to prove that that is in fact this. So if we do view dot background color, equals uh, dot system pink cool and now if we run our app we should pull up a view controller and it should be system pink this is the initial view controller and there you go beautiful pretty pink system pink so it is working we've got rid of the storyboard uh we have this set up here in the scene delegate if i go back to it uh, again so when i get into the next video which is the navigation this is where we're going to put our tab bar controller that holds everything but for now it's just that view controller uh, so that is about uh, the code for this video now let's talk about importing the assets the app icon dark mode and sf symbols so to do that let's click on uh assets folder right here let's make this smaller we don't need it to be that big if you click on the app icon you can see all like the app icons this takes and you can see it's for ipad apps you know the app store icon spotlight search all this stuff uh, and also in this course description you're going to see some files you can download uh, and you will have the assets uh, there the app icon and the assets for the app in there so make sure you download that wherever you downloaded that to pull that up and we're going to use those Okay, so I have my folder up. You can see all the uh, all the app icons here. Now, sometimes you can like highlight them all and drag them all here and it'll put them in the right spots. I don't know, that never worked for me. I actually just tested a little bit ago. It still doesn't do exactly what I want. So this is tedious. I'm gonna do the first couple and I'm gonna fast forward through me doing it because you, you can kind of get the picture. So if you see here in the upper left here, iPhone notification, 20 points. So I need 20 point, 2X and 3X. So here's my 20 point, 2X, drop it there. Here's my 20 point, 3X. Drop it there. Same thing over here. You see iPhone settings is 29 points. I need 2X and 3X. So 29.2X, there it is. 29.3X, there it is. And then you just rinse and repeat through this whole thing. And if you're wondering where I got the exact 
you know, app icon dimensions and all that stuff. The design tool I use is called Sketch. Uh, again, I'm gonna include the Sketch file in the, the course downloads. Um, and Sketch actually has a kind of a template for iOS apps. And you just kind of upload your icon it spits out all the correct dimensions that you need. So that's that's how I got this. Um, but again, one last one before I fast forward, you can see iPhone Spotlight is a 40 point. I need 40.2X and 40.3X, drag it there. And I'm just gonna fast forward. Okay, now as you can see, I have all my icons uh, filled in. And I do wanna note that I have seen a lot of people turn in their their take home project app and it doesn't have an app icon. You know what your your app looks like when it doesn't have an icon. It's got that like little grid diagram. Again, we want to go above and beyond. We want to showcase attention to detail, even if it's something simple. Like you can see, all I did was put the, the GitHub logo with and I typed out followers underneath it. You don't have to do anything crazy, but make sure you include an app icon, even if it's very, very basic. That's again, small attention to details. So now let's import our assets and we're gonna talk about the, you know, the dark mode asset and the light mode asset. So again, same thing here, the folder app assets, you can see, uh, we'll move this over to the right so it's readable here. Uh, you can see I have like avatar placeholder dark, 2X and 3X, avatar placeholder, just light, 2X and 3X. And the reason 2X and 3X, those are for retina displays. 1X is for non-retina display. Um, the reason I don't have any 1X is because Apple hasn't released a non-retina display in like forever. I think I think the iPhone 4 was the first retina display with 2X. So unless you're supporting the iPhone 3 for some reason, don't worry about 1X. Um, I guess one of the later iPads was not retina, but either way, retina screens have been around for a while. So the very minimum for retina is 2X. And then a lot of the newer ones are even 3X. So that's kind of why you don't see a 1X version. Anyway, back to the assets. So let's use the example of the avatar placeholder. We're not gonna import the dark one yet because I'll show you why. So bring in the 2X and the 3X and you'll see it'll make the same asset. It'll just give me a 2X and a 3X right here. Now, if I pull back the right pane again, you see this is universal, this asset right here. Down here on the right uh, under appearances, if you click any and dark, now you're gonna get a dark version. So if we go back to our uh, finder here, I have avatar placeholder dark, and I drag that to the 2X, drag that to the 3X. Now I have a dark version. So for example, when we create our cell that's gonna hold this placeholder, I just have to create UI image, you know, with the name avatar placeholder. And because I have this set up here, iOS is gonna know like, hey, if the phone's in dark mode, use the dark asset. If the phone's in light mode, use the light asset. And real quick for some design context, in the light mode, you can see it's a lot brighter because against the white background, that's gonna be more faint. And again, this is like a placeholder. We want it to be like very light and almost hardly noticeable. Uh, and the same thing for dark mode, right? If, if I use this light icon on a black background, it's gonna be real bright and stand out too much. But so you wanna make it darker on the dark background. So again, it looks faint and you know you can barely see it. So that's kind of why those colors are what they are. So let's finish this out with the rest of the assets here. Uh, same thing, let's do uh, empty state logo, light, drag that in there. And then again, make sure it's clicked. Appearances over here on the right, any dark. Now we get our dark mode options. Let's get our uh, empty state logo 2X, empty state logo dark 3X. Cool, that's done. Uh, and now we need our GitHub logo. This is for our kind of like our title. Now we have the light version. Again, make sure we get the option for the dark, any dark and throw in the dark mode uh, GitHub logo. So there's the 2X and the 3X. So now our assets are in place. We have light and dark mode versions of them. So again, automatically, it's gonna use the right asset based on what the what mode the phone is in. And lastly, let me show you real quick where to download SF symbols. We're not gonna use them right now, but I, I want you to have the program downloaded so when we use it, we can just get right into it. Cause again, this is like the, the setup video. So if you just pull up a browser uh, and just literally type in SF uh, symbols, download so make sure you go to the developer.apple.com one click on that for the human interface guidelines this will tell you all about sf symbols if you want to kind of you know read through that but the very first link here uh download the sf symbols app click on that it's downloading actually i'm going to cancel that because no oh, stop it uh i already have it <laughs> so let me pull up sf symbols real quick there we go so once you download it open it up here's the sf symbols app and you can see on the left here, you have all kinds of like, you know, connectivity, transportation. It's broken down by category and stuff that you can use. Um, or you can do all, and it's very searchable. So up here on the right, you know, you search arrow. Uh, it'll pull up, you know, everything with like an arrow in it. And what, we're, what we want, uh, at least for how we're going to use them, 
is we want this string that's below it. So when we do decide to use our icons, like for example, folder, we're gonna use this folder icon right here. It's literally just called folder. But we're, we're gonna use this string for folder to identify and tell Xcode like this is the SF symbol we want. So again, that's how we're gonna use this app. So that wraps up the initial setup. Uh, again, back to the scene delegate here. Uh, this view controller is what we're showing. In the next video, we're gonna dive into the navigation, how this is gonna be a tab bar controller that holds navigation controllers, that holds view controllers. Like it's gonna hold the entire you know, navigation foundation of our app. That's what we're talking about next time. Can't wait.